This is Giovanni Roverso in Bellingham, Washington. You're watching Live Music Fights for Survival, part one in a series of interviews with professionals in the music industry. The 2019 novel coronavirus took the U.S. by storm. A national emergency was declared on Friday, March 13th, 2020. The number of infections and related deaths had grown exponentially in the first two weeks following the first known such death. The following Sunday, it was decided. Governor Inslee mandated that all restaurants, bars, entertainment, and recreational facilities shut down. The number of deaths and weekly infections peaked by mid-April, as the nation's unemployment rate climbed to 15%, the second highest on record since the Great Depression. Many industries have been negatively impacted, with the live music industry in an especially difficult position. Most venues will have been shut down for more than three months by the time live shows can start up again. But even then, it will be much longer before things return to some kind of normalcy. Five unique perspectives over a one-month period paint a picture of the Bellingham live music industry at the peak of the pandemic. They own venues, run them, or help make shows happen. So in part two, I interviewed Katie Gray, the director of a music and arts-oriented nonprofit organization, Makeshift. In part three, I interviewed Kristen Nelson, an independent booker and lighting designer. In part four, I interviewed Holly Huffman, a city council member and an owner of The Shakedown. In part five, I interviewed Aaron Gill, an owner of the Firefly Lounge, which shut down permanently in May. And in part six, I had two interviews with Craig Jewell, an owner of the Wild Buffalo House of Music, who is working with the Washington Nightlife and Music Association as it lobbies for venues' survival. Experts don't know when it will be safe for crowds to gather in large numbers again. As of now, it's phase two in Whatcom County. Very limited gatherings are allowed, and places like restaurants can be open at half capacity. Politicians tend to be more optimistic than health authorities about how quickly things can go back to normal. Phase 3 would finally allow some venues to open, but not with more than 50 people in the building. Nightclubs and larger events are specifically forbidden. It's unclear whether small live music shows will be permitted at all. Phase 4 officially lets concert venues reopen, but the plan doesn't say if events will have a cap initially. The virus is in for a slow burn-off. Effective treatments like high-tech virus tracking and eventually a vaccine could mean more than a year before most of the country gets past phase four. What's more, counties will go to the previous phase if the number of cases gets out of hand. You might have heard of Opening Up America Again, the White House guide released in mid-April, which states modeled their plans off of. It's comparable, but largely ignores live music. If you try to compare what state and federal levels are saying to what medical professionals like the FDA commissioner from 2017 to 2019, Scott Gottlieb, are saying, the end is not on the scale. Gottlieb's recommendations came out at the end of March and start phase three only after effective treatments are developed and ready to be mass produced. He then defined a fourth phase where life goes back to normal, but where infrastructure is improved to better prepare and address future infectious diseases.